Hey everyone, Cloud Chivester back with another video for you today. So, like I said in previous videos, I'm going to touch on the bigger companies, the FANG companies, a bit more because I do believe that fundamentally those are great companies to have in your long term portfolio if we have times of market volatility like we've been having for the last couple of months. These are usually the stocks that will keep your portfolio a bit more balanced. So in my last video, we talked about Amazon. I touched on Amazon buying MGM and yesterday they announced they are officially buying MGM. If you haven't watched that, it's going to be in the top right corner. I talked about Facebook a couple of times. I know most of us don't like Facebook because of the social media aspect, but the business itself is very, very lucrative. And the more and more they go into e-commerce or VR, AR, the better it will become. I said this. I think almost a year ago that Facebook is going to be the next trillion dollar company and are pretty close to that. I think another 8% and they're worth a trillion dollar. So this is also going to be my next video. So stay tuned for that. But in this video, let's talk about Apple, the Apple ecosystem, why it's working wonders for them, why it's very difficult for people that have Apple products to switch and go to maybe products like Samsung or Google or whatever. So we're going to touch on that. I'm also going to touch on the Apple versus Epic trial and what it could mean if Epic actually wins that trial, it could have some negative impacts on Apple. So stay tuned for that. Everything will be discussed in this video. But before I do so, I just want to thank everyone that has been subscribing lately. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button if you like the content. And if you like these videos, leave it an early thumbs up as it really helps me outgrow the channel and get my videos out there. I would also like to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You guys know I love finding new investing tools and resources to help me find the latest growth stock and innovative company. And right now I have a discount for one of my favorite services, the full offers. Through the Motley Fool's stock advisor service, you get access to a ton of expert stock picks. Every month you'll get two picks that are aimed at growing your wealth and to help you realize your financial goals. Stock advisors' average stock picks have returned over 500%. If growing your money is something you'd like to do more this year, you can visit www.fool.com slash couch investor or click on the link below for access to my special offer and decide if stock advisor is right for you. Now let's dive into this. All right, so you've probably heard that term ecosystem a thousand times, ecosystem, ecosystem. I've talked about the ecosystem for Square countless times, Square has been in line with the seller side, cash app side, and now Tidal, and maybe in the future, many, many more. All of that needs to work together to form a beautiful ecosystem. Well, Apple has been doing this for years already, and is probably going to do this for the years to come, but think of it as a puzzle. And every time they add a new product, the puzzle becomes bigger and bigger. New products are other pieces of the puzzle. So think of the iPhone, the iPod Touch, the iPod, the iMac, Apple Watch, AirPods, AirTags, Apple TV, etc. Those are all pieces of the puzzle, pieces of the ecosystem. Now you also have Apple services, Apple AirPlay, AirDrop, iCloud, and the freaking Apple App Store, and Apple Pay, and probably in the future, many, many more as well. Now, let's go back a bit to 2007, when, in my opinion, the biggest piece of tech this century has seen has been announced. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> But what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, so the iPhone event and the Apple Touch event was one of the greatest events out there. The iPod Touch you can see here in the background because, well, back then we switched from using phones like this to using phones like this. Obviously, this isn't an iPhone, this is a Samsung Galaxy. But you get the picture. Now, obviously, since that event, they added countless of new products, like we've mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, and each of those products can work perfectly well independently. Maybe the Apple Watch, not so much, but all the others can work independently, great. But they can work even better if you have all of those products together. AirPods can connect to your iPhone seamlessly, Apple Watch, again, same thing, MacBook, you can connect, you can switch from your phone or tablet to your MacBook, you can continue writing the email, 
Apple AirDrop, AirPlay, whatever, everything works great within the ecosystem. I'll just show you a quick picture. You can see it right here. So let's start from the top. You can see that the MacBook, the iMac pushes the boundaries of a computer by using elements of an iPad and iPhone. So it's not erasing functionalities. It's basically what you can do on your iPad and your phone. You can do it as well on a bigger screen. Now we go down back to the iPhone and tablet things you can do on your bigger screen, you can now do on a smaller screen. Going a bit further, things that you could have done on your iPhone and your tablet, you can now do on a wearable device like the Apple Watch. And lastly, almost going back to the top, what you can do on your watch, you can also do on your iPhone or iPad if you want to, and then the circle goes on and on and on. Now this whole ecosystem thing has been viewed as a positive, but obviously as well as a negative. Now the positive side is, well, for people that are Apple fans that are buying Apple everything, this is great because the new products come along, you sync your device and it's synced with everything you own, no hassle, pretty easy. But what about those people that maybe do not want to have everything Apple? It becomes a bit of a hassle, it becomes very tricky and that's where the term, the walled garden comes in, those people beyond the wall. So basically these are an ecosystem with super high walls that are meant for you to stay inside those walls, not really climb above and look what's out there. For example, there are products such as the Apple AirTags. You have other companies doing the exact same thing, but Apple comes along with their own product, which syncs seamlessly with your iPhone device. Pretty easy, syncs with all your Apple devices actually, and works perfectly within the ecosystem. Now you could, go buy somebody else's product, but will it work as well as the Apple product? Probably not. So this is where all the negativity comes in. This is where all the antitrust things comes in. Now for Apple, this is great because while their ecosystem works perfectly, once you're in it, you'll probably never leave it. Because imagine you have lots of Apple stuff and suddenly you want to move to a better product, the Samsung Galaxy. Yes, I'm a bit biased, but hey, who cares? Now. Let's say you want to switch. What happens to your Apple Watch functionalities? It goes down to zero. It becomes just a watch that has zero functionalities. What happens to your iCloud? It won't work anymore on your Samsung Galaxy. App Store downloads won't work either. AirPods, yes, could connect to your phone, but is it seamlessly? No, it is not. So you see where I'm going with this? Once you're in it, you wanna leave, it's very, very difficult. Now, whether you like it or not, in recent years, Apple hasn't really been as revolutionary as it was before, but that didn't stop the company from generating more and more billions of dollars. Now they came out with a service package called Apple One. You pay subscription service and you get all those services in one package. Now, in my opinion, I think they will go to a subscription service for their hardware as well. Let's say you buy this package, you get an iPhone, Apple Watch, tablet, and maybe a MacBook or something like that. And every time there's a new generation coming out, you will get the chance to buy the new package as well. Think product as a service could be huge for Apple. That way they make sure that you stay inside the ecosystem and you keep on buying their new products. Now again, touching back on this previous point, they don't really have to innovate that much because let's take the Apple AirPods, for example. Is it that innovative, that crazy of an innovation? Probably not, it's just earplugs that connect wirelessly to your phone. Is it great that it's without wires and the quality of the sound is good? Yes, but is it that special? No, it's not. But still, it makes them billions of dollars. Now look at this, AirPods revenue versus tech companies. Now AirPods generated $23 billion, that was back in 2020. That's just behind Tesla and Netflix but still more than Adobe, Uber, Nvidia, AMD, Spotify, Square, Twitter, Shopify, and Snapchat, and probably countless of other companies as well. And that's the power of Apple. Simple product can make them billions of dollars. Obviously this infographic was made last year. Right now I'm sure Nvidia, Adobe, all those companies are making more revenue, but still I don't think they will beat AirPods. Now, last two points, Apple is already a $2.2 trillion company, but they're nowhere near their top. They're going into health payments. And in my opinion, they're also going to go into the Apple car. I know right now these are just rumors circulating each and every year. I do not think Apple will make an Apple car. I do think they will partner up with an auto manufacturer 
and they will be in charge or they will offer their services for infotainment and maybe AI or everything that has to do with software inside the car. Now, obviously, these are rumors. This will probably happen just in a couple of years or maybe not. But another segment that is very, very popular right now and will become even more popular in the future is VR and AR. We've seen Snapchat coming out with their AR glasses. Facebook has been in VR since they bought Oculus. They're probably the best ones in that field right now. Apple also is going into that field. Now it's been rumored that mixed reality headset will come out in 2022 with Apple glasses to follow in 2025. Now the headset is AR VR while Apple glasses are augmented reality, which is always more difficult to make. Now here's the catch. The headset is expected to be much more expensive than headsets from other companies. For example, the Oculus Quest 2 costs about $300 or so, but the Apple headset is going to cost 10 times that at a price tag of around $3,000. Now, is this going to stop people from buying this $3,000 headset? No, it's probably going to be sold out very, very fast. Again, this is just going to be the first generation, obviously the next one, second, third, fourth generation are going to be better and cheaper as well. So obviously VR, AR, huge field. Everybody wants to go into that field because this is going to be the next big thing. Now, my last point is the Apple Epic trial. It's going to take a while until we get an actual answer about who won the trial, what's going to happen. But in big, Epic went to court because they feel that Apple, Apple App Store is anti-competitive. Apple takes 30%, a really, really big cut if you think of it, because, well, yes, you can make the point that it's Apple's device, it's Apple App Store, they build it so they can ask whatever they want. True, but if you want your app to be available on the iPhone, you can't, you can't really bypass the App Store. Whereas with Android, there are ways to install apps on the phone without going to Google Play. Apple has a monopoly on the whole App Store and the whole Apple ecosystem, whatever. You can call it a duopoly with Google, but they're basically telling each other, look, we're going to do this. Are you going to do that? Yes, yes, great. They have a deal with between each other. And that's it. That's basically a monopoly. Antitrust issues are real. Now, again, I don't think Apple will win, but I do think they will make a fair point and the case will not be Apple won, Epic, you have nothing to say. It's probably going to be, no, they don't have to reduce 30% to 0% or whatever but Epic is probably going to get something from this trial and so will future developers and future companies out there. Now that will be it for this video. I hope you now understand why Apple isn't always buy. I'm pretty sure that most of my viewers here come from the United States. I recently found out that most of the people in the United States don't even use WhatsApp. They use iMessage because they're all on iPhone, which is pretty crazy, pretty mind boggling as a European. But hey, there you have it. That's also a bull case. Now let me know down in the comments below what you think about Apple and Apple's ecosystem. Do you own Apple shares? Where do you think the future lies for Apple? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like these videos, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. And as always guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.